Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Let's go ahead and this meeting is being recorded. Click continue to accept or thrown out. <laughs> Brand new feature from Zoom. Everybody knows they're being recorded. Welcome, everyone. Let's go ahead and make sure you all can hear me. If you would please type the number one in the chat box. Let me know that you can on Zoom and on YouTube uh, or Facebook, wherever you're following us along with us. By all means, go right ahead and do that so I am not talking to myself for the next hour or so. That is never a fun situation to go through. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Helen. How are you? All right. A lot of brand new names that I do not recognize in here. Welcome. Afternoon, Michael. Voodoo, good to see you, sir. John, good afternoon. Robert. Robert S. Morning. Oscar, good morning, sir. Hope everybody's having a great day. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off. So keeping in mind that each and every one of the candidates that we talk about today is our, our only for educational purposes. Nothing is meant to be advice and or recommendations. OK, so as we go through, there's a couple of things I want to highlight here today. This week, July 21st. Let's see. When is that? Hmm, today. So we've got trading you tonight. Tony's got a phenomenal topic planned out for this evening uh, that he'll be teaching in there. Mastering the trade, for those of you that are in power option plays, will be on the 23rd, and Monster Market Movers is on the 24th. Tuesday, Mastermind Group, as we do each and every Tuesday night, and Power Hour Coaches Corner are both on schedule this week for their regular programs, as are Power Option Plays, Covered Call Explorer, and E-Mini Think Tank. They're all set up for the regular week this week. No, uh, no holidays or anything in there to, to hamper that. Here's our follow us page. So there's a thank you and a please. Thank you if you have, please do if you have not. Be sure to follow along with all the various social media, social media platforms that we have. Sean and I are gonna be recording some videos today. We've got two other days this week that we're gonna start plotting some stuff out and, and start some more recordings. So I'm excited and it's not just for YouTube, although our YouTube channel is growing nicely, it's for all the various social platforms that we, uh, that we have here, as, as well as one or two more we're looking to add. Oh. Talk to me. I should have asked this question before I got to this point. How have you guys done today? Talk to me. Tell me what trades you've done. I don't care if they're funded or non-funded means nothing. We'll call them all non-funded. Okay. Let me know how you've done today. How is your trading gone? How'd you do last week? Did you have a good week, a bad week? Was it tough? Was it good? You tell me. <laughs> Tom said, good, af uh, good afternoon, coach. Thanks for the spy trade strategy from the mastermind group last week. Lost $75 Wednesday and made $525 on Thursday. There you go. What a great trade today, Tom, on SPY. Uh, I think I'm still in it. Well, I'll let you know uh, when we get there. Uh, let's see. Watching today. Oscar said, still new, but working on it. Just jump in, Oscar. Paper trade, paper trade, paper trade. Don't care if you understand it. It's time to do it. Right? The only way you will learn is hitting the button, hitting the button, hitting the button again and again and again. Uh, newbie for Sylvia. All right, no worries. Uh, let's see. So Robert S. BX, KRPM, day trade, uh, QQQs for $510, up $973 for the day. Excellent. Good job, Robert. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, John said, Wheel of Fortune, uh, CRON, Telray, and uh, FOSL, Fossil. Very good. Uh, Suzanne said last week was tough finally made some money in SPY today it was tough a week last week without a doubt uh Sherry let's see if we can't get Sherry some help there uh Amy Michael said Rob I need a, ve a better visual or explanation of the SPY strategy it is it a structured type of trade like the rut iron condor kind of Michael there are some rules to it I'm going to share that as my trade well, well, actually, I've got a couple of different trades today. Uh, first ones will come off of Amelia, our head trader. Uh, for those of you that do not know Amelia, she is an absolutely amazing trader, a trained killer when it comes to the market right now. She is crushing it. So good. She is, I'm going to blow you away with one in particular of her trades today. I'm going to share just two, but one in particular, I'm going to blow you away. Some of you are going to scratch in your head saying, that's wrong. Your numbers are wrong. They're not wrong. You watch. All right here's the first one that she did so we'll get to that michael i'll look at my strategy in a little bit for you so the first one that amelia did is a typical spy trade that she loves to trade 
Normally we do in trade watch alerts, we do one contract. On this SPY and or Q's trade, Amelia does 13 contracts. She's very big in Fibonacci. If we talk numbers, uh, how many days you wanna run this for? Do you wanna run it for seven days? We'll offer this, whatever it is. And she's like, nope, I wanna run it for eight. It's a Fibonacci number, let's use Fibs. So she's trading 13 contracts of this setup. And if you look at the setup, the way it reads out the bottom line, right down in here, the bottom line shows at 9.37 this morning, she bought 13 contracts to open of the SPY June 21st weekly option, which expires hmm, today, today, the 414 calls, she bought a 266, right? So that's $266 per contract. Could you do this with one? Absolutely. Absolutely. You certainly can, without a doubt. You don't need to do 13. This is what Amelia does is 13, right? She sold it at 944. So seven minutes later, almost to the second, actually, she sold those contracts for 309. Wait a second. How, how did we do? How did we do? We got calculated here somewhere, don't we? C. Let me bring that puppy over. It's a little bit big. Ah, there we go. Okay. So if we take 309 and subtract from it 266, 43 cents times uh, ba, 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 1300, and that's $559 for the day. Not too shabby, not too shabby. 16% rate of return, six minutes, I'm gonna give it seven. I'm gonna push it to the limits and call it seven minutes, right? 16% rate of return. I'm going to tell you what, something, folks. Crushing it is an understatement. I use that phrase a lot, but that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get every one of you to learn how to crush it. But in the meantime, I need you to hobble along and hit the enter button. Place trades over, non-funded, over and over and over and over again. The only way you will learn it. The only way I became as skilled at the market as I am is I placed over 300 paper trades in a 30 day period. Man, I knew my system inside and out, not only my trading system, but the trading platform. I knew every intricacy about it for the things that I used. I didn't know everything. It's like Microsoft Excel. I could use it. Don't ask me to start creating formulas for these very whacked out things that people do. I can't do that, but I can use Excel. I can use TradeStation. Not every feature in it because I don't use every feature like their easy language, which by the way, they lie. It's not easy. I don't care. I don't know who made that name up. They were just like high as a kite when they came up with easy language as a name because it's not, right? So here's 13 contracts, SPY, $559. Overall, I'd say we did pretty good, right? Amelia did pretty good, not me. Let's look at this one. These are both today. This is on, let's see. Who is this? GameStop. Amelia did a vertical spread right out of the box, 9.34 this morning, so four minutes after the market opened. So it's a credit spread. What did she do? She bought it, and then she did call options. So she did a bear call spread. Market rolling over, she did a bear call spread. So she sold an option, but instead of having a naked put, she went ahead and bought protection up here. So now that's her maximum risk, not where if you sold a naked put, how far down does it crash? It crashes. She protected herself with a credit spread, all right, an insurance policy. Does she pay for that? Yes, it takes away some of the potential premium. Well, what happened on this is she took in a credit of 85 cents. You see it right here, 85 cents. Nice. She got out of this trade at uh, 9.42. So, it says that she got a credit on this position. What in the world happened there? How did that happen? Well, implied volatility kicked back in and raised the prices of the option, and she was able to get a credit back on the second component of the trade. She crushed it, crushed it on this position today. Um, Barry said, had she held it for a half an hour, she could have made three to 400% in under an hour. 
I, I am. Am I too greedy? Listen, as long as your rules are met, Barry, we're good. We're good. Nothing at all to worry about whatsoever. Yeah, there's the kudos. Go, Amelia. And absolutely. Thank you, Brenda. Appreciate that. Amelia does a great job. Phenomenal job, folks. Absolutely phenomenal. This is, again, from today, right? From today is this trade. So let me do this. Let's escape out of that. All right. So, Michael, you are asking about SPY. Guys, here's my trade today. One is all I've had the time to do. You know, it's funny. As a business owner, you know, look at a mechanic. Look at a mechanic and their car, right? How often are they fixing their car? Not very often, right? They do, but it's not like before they became a mechanic and they just love doing it on a weekend, right? All weekend long, you're ripping out an engine, you're ripping out trannies, right? Now, if you own a mechanic shop, eh, you're kind of busy. You're running the mechanic shop. You're not doing everything you love all day long any longer. No different here. I love to trade, but I don't have the time all day long to do it. So I have to have strategies that I can kind of set up, put in place, do their thing, walk away. Uh, let's see, am I okay? I'm still, we may get stopped out on this candle right here. I'm still okay at this point, uh, I believe. Yeah, I, we'll analyze it in a second. So I don't trade as actively as I did. I still trade every day or look to trade every day. If I don't find one, I don't take for the sake of. I only trade if the trade presents itself, right? So what did I do today? <clears throat> when I look at SPY, Michael, the trade that I do is different than the way Amelia does her. She's got very specific setups that she uses in trade watch alerts. I mean, with her numbers today, you all would have paid for your whole freaking year with her two trades had you just jumped in and did those trades right there, just from today. And they come out right on your cell phone. Every day you get three, four, five different text messages, and there's a two week trial to it, right? Amy, could you drop that uh, a link to trade watch alerts in there so everybody could see that trial? I'd appreciate that. So, Michael, what I did was this. Um, actually, let me grab a drawing tool. Or not. Ah, it's hidden. Okay. That's why. Let me open this back up. Um, I can't do that, can I, Sean? Yeah. All right. I can't grab that. All right, so we will do it with the mouse. So normally I only have an eight and a 21 on here. Today I did not have an opportunity to sit and watch this position, nor did I want to. I felt that after, although I'm disappointed, that after the move to the downside and we started out this morning, got back above the, the first candle of the day, the high, I saw this gap up and the pullback and I went, yes, we're going to crush again. And then we took a bounce. It's all right. What's happening here? Nothing yet. We're looking like we're crossing moving averages. We get into this candle. Moving averages had crossed on the close. We got higher than this. Well, let me back up. So we opened up. We came back down, retested on the eight moving average, and then we started to push higher. At that point is where I took the entry into the SPY, uh, and I bought the option. It was $1. sixty something. Uh, $1.62. 162 uh, was the 416 calls. So if we look, 416 calls, right? Which right now has a 96 delta. And these calls, by the way, expire today, all right? They expire today. So right now, 418 by 422 is the price on them, okay? So a little bit lower you know it's dropping a little bit moving around so four 16 calls we bought it at dollar 62 you can see it's got a nice increase in premium today what happened we started to climb and what are the moving averages doing they're spreading out they're getting bigger they're getting bigger they're getting bigger so i insert a five period exponential moving average on here why because we're not getting back to the eight anymore those moving averages are spreading and we're just rocking, man. We are just gliding it up, gliding it up, gliding it up, right? I am now at the point where I get below the five and what's happening? I could see my moving averages are tightening up a little bit, the eight to 21, right? But overall, the trend was in place. If we look right here, that's 1110, not unexpected to see a little bit of slowdown taking place in there, right? And then what? Move down to the eight, you get a bounce. 
we come back down to the eight. Oops, sorry about that. And we bounce. We're back at the eight. We get a bounce. We bounce again. We're up again, up, up, up. Pull back a little bit. And look what happened. At this candle right here was our first candle closed below the eight moving average. Now we're in lunchtime. We're in lunchtime. So what are we doing here? So right now this candle 1210. Right, 1215. This is a 1220 closing. It will close at 1220. Right. That's why you're seeing it when it's only 1216. This is not back to the future. We get to see ahead. All right. Take it easy. So either you are out on the close below the eight, you're out on the second close below the eight, or you're managing the position saying, All right, I'm going to watch this because we are in the doldrums of the day. And if we get a move to X down to X, we're coming out of that position. For me, down to X would be the midpoint of the two moving averages, which is a fibbit of our moving averages, right? Would be a place to exit out of that trade, right? Or like I said, you took it out as we broke down below. We're in the doldrums though, so that's it. But if I am taken out of this trade, I am cautiously watching because I would wanna get back in because I don't think we're done for the day. Not unless I could see some negativity start kicking in across all indexes. And right now, we're up 600 points. We were up five and change when I got to the office. Uh, actually, it's 523. My bad, I thought it said six. That's why I need the dang glasses on. So 526, we're up almost 100 on the NASDAQ and we're up 51 points on the S&P 500. So overall looking real well, right? Good movements across the board. Right, but if, if the option right now, and for those of you that are not familiar, watch. If we go to the 416, do not click on price. Anywhere that gives you a word. Here it says sell, here it says buy. Don't click there, because that'll set an order up. If you go any other field that doesn't give you a word and click on that. Well, Rob, you're, you're left clicking, but I don't see anything happening. Right, now go look at the chart. Ah, this is not the SPY anymore. This is the SPY, right? $416 call, C for call, okay? 2106, so 2021, June 21st, today, expiration, right? And you can look at this option and go back and see from that 950, which is about where we got in on that 950 candle. So on that candle, don't worry about what the pattern looks like because I didn't take the trade because of the options pattern. I took the trade on the stock pattern. That's the candle right there at about $1.62 uh, is where we're at, right? 59.66, uh, close enough, right there, 64, right? Right about there is where we took the trade, took the entry. So we got up above the previous high, took the bounce, moving average cross, life is good. And you can see it's worth 424 right now. So if we're able, if we just decided right now that we're gonna get out at four, uh, let's just call it 422, just to make it easy numbers, since we got in at 62, right? Well, actually, no, let's just do it at exact, exact numbers. So we're at 419 right now. 4.19, I'm gonna take away 1.62. That's $2.57. Anybody wanna go ahead and do the math on what the rate of return is on that? If I put $1.62 in the trade and I take 257 out, I have greater than 100% on that trade. I've got $2.57 on there. If I did one contract, what does that come out to be? Times 100 shares, that's $257. If I did 10 contracts, that's $2,570. Thor's hammer, baby. That is any trade that comes in over $1,000, guys. That's it. One th Give me your trades over a grand. You get the same thing in the congratulations. $2,570 on this trade. We'll call it a paper trade. $2,570, if I close it out right now at the current numbers, I don't know. How many of you are okay with $2,570 for the day? How many of you have to go to work any longer if you could do that? What if you only could do it once a week? Forget about five times. What if you can only do it once? 
Can you stay home? What if you can only do half of that? What if you only did a tenth of it? Forget about the staying home part. What if once or twice a week you can make $250 a day? Rob, I'd love to do it. Here's my question. What are you doing now? What do you mean? I don't mean right now, this minute you're watching me, which is what you should be doing. What are you doing in the market? Are you watching? Are you trading? I don't mean real money. I do mean hitting buttons though, but I don't understand it. You know, I wasn't an ace baseball player as an eight year old kid, but how did I learn? I threw the ball, I swung the bat, I caught, I did whatever I had to to learn how to become a good ball player, right? No different here. You've got to swing the bat. You've got to throw the ball. You've got to take out the glove. There's no way you're going to be successful if you're not doing all of it. And you need to do it now. There's no waiting. There's no thinking about it. There's no perfection. No. Oh, but if I, if it goes against me, it's just so deflating. Oh, I feel horrible if I forget about deflating. Forget about that. Guys, that's not what this is about. This is about learning. And the only way you learn is to make mistakes. That's it. My kids in business have worked for me since they were eight and nine years old each. Each of yeah, child labor laws, they don't exist in family businesses. Forget it. They don't exist. Okay. They did get paid. They got paid for it, but there's no child labor laws based on their age. They work for me. They live with me. I pay their bills, right? Did they make mistakes? Yes. Did I see them making the mistakes? Yes. Did I fix it? No. I let them make the mistake. That's the only way they're going to learn how. The absolute only way they're going to learn how is by making the mistake itself. All right. Let me see. We've got a couple of questions here. Or comments, I should say. Some might be questions. Um, Robert said, that's exactly why I'm here. Tom said, I'd be a very happy camper. Uh, so a crossover, the 821 bullish was the entry. Uh, look, Michael, you asked that question. Good. So it's not the crossover, Michael. It's the crossover and the retest. That is the entry. You are going to have 30% of those-ish will go against you. Tight stops, you're out of the trade. But that's the way to trade it. The breakout, I am not a breakout trader. There are traders that are so much better than I as breakout traders. I am a consistent trader. I am not a home run hitter, although in baseball I was. I was really good, really good at baseball, right? Really good at all sports. Football, you didn't want to go up against me. I would take your head off without any fear of hurting you when I did it. It was a different person back then. My goal was to inflict as much pain as possible while trying to take that ball from your hand, all right? That's what I did. I'm not trying to inflict pain here. I'm trying to stop the pain at this point for you from not getting hurt uh, in the market right so you want to make sure michael that on this setup you see the the moving averages cross you get a retest which normally to me normally means a close near it but it doesn't have to depending on the pattern previous to the current candle meaning the last couple of candles what they look like as long as it's not i get this big breakout and then a continuation or i get this big breakout and a long wick down and it whips back up you got to be careful of did we really retest at that point you might have it doesn't work well for me as a trader. I like a breakout, a close, or breakout and it gets back close to the moving average and the bounce from there. I also don't do the trade after 11.30, between 11.30 and 1.30, we don't do that trade. Uh, so Michael, I hope that answered it. If not, let me know. Um, we do a 65 to 85 delta. If I'm trading SPY and it's expiring today, I'm normally doing the 85 delta, normally. Jim said, if you made $2,570 a week for 50 weeks, the reason Jim didn't do 52 is because you deserve two weeks off of vacation. He knows that. That's $128,500. Very good income. I love it. Sylvie so said, yes, paper trade needs to be better. Uh, um, need to be better on my risk. Got it. There you go. Good, 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 good. Excellent, Michael. Glad, it, glad that I was that uh, I hit it for you. Limit order, Michael. We don't do markets unless you have to get in or out of a position. Otherwise, we don't do market orders, right? Again, for me, this was my trade today, right? I have some other orders set up from yesterday. Uh, I didn't get a chance to check if any of those were filled, but my day trade that I'm looking at today, SPY is the first thing. 
Why? The volatility is extremely low. The risk is extremely low. There are three expirations a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, assuming all five days of the week are trading days, right? And not holidays, but there's two to three, but normally three expirations every single week in the market, right? Love it, love it, love it. Q's recently shifted over to that. Brenda is a very happy camper. Brenda very actively trades the Q's every day, massive number of contracts that she trades, right? And now she could do it you know, with three expirations a week instead of one. Um, Sylvie said, entry on a five minute or a one minute chart. So let me, let me break that down for you, Sylvie. All right, let me do this. Let's get that out of the way. Let's bring the chart back in. And I'm gonna make this a little small. Sorry about the view of it, but that's my template. What you're looking at on the screen behind me, that's my template, all right? That's what I look at. I trade off of, uh, but let's go back to SPY. I trade off of the five minute candle. I use the one minute candle to help tweak an entry potentially, but I trade off of the five minute that candle. I'm not looking for a breakout on a one. I'm not looking for a retest on the one. I'm looking for the breakout on the five and I'm looking for how the one minute candles react while I'm waiting for the five minute to completely form. So I trade off of the one, off of the five. Now you can trade off anything you want. I mean, one of the coaches that teaches with us, Brandon Wendell, he taught our inner circle, our highest level coaching students that we have. And he was talking about 1000, uh, uh, 1000 tick charts or 1000 minute chart, I think it was, but he had a very specific 1000 chart that he used, whether it's tick, minute, it, it doesn't matter. It has to be one that fits your risk profile. The faster the chart, the, to me, the, the more activity, the more movement, the more whipsaw you see take place in there, the more, you know what the right word is? Noise. If you're trading off a one minute chart, it can become very noisy. Here, look, you see the five minute chart right here? Watch. Five minute chart, I got a green candle in there, right? It's building, it's building, it's building. It hasn't got above the moving average, but look what just happened on the one minute chart now. All right, this is 25. So the candle we're on right now is one, two, three. These last three candles are what's happened in the five minute candle right now. So I can see inside that five minute candle looking at the one. So I use this template in conjunction with each of the charts together to help give me a better picture of where the market is and what it's doing. Um, if you day trade SPY every day, should you always look at 85 Delta on expiration day? Um, all right. So I think the way the question is worded is if I'm trading the SPY, normally my Delta is 65 to 85, closer to 65. On SPY with very low volatilities on expiration day, I have such a low cost in the trade. If I went right now and said, I think I am bullish on SPY, what option should I trade? I could trade this 75 Delta, the 419 for $1.30, right? That's midpoint. Yeah, you know, I'm okay putting a little more cash in that trade. So I would be going for that 85. I don't have one. So I'd be going for the 88. So $2.13 is my cost in that trade, right? That's my cost in the position. Now, uh, Greeks are not as accurate on the last uh, week. And now we're talking about having a couple of hours left, not even weeks, All right? Here's gamma, my gamma chart. For every dollar the stock moves, my, my delta is going to move about 11, right? And it can't be very accurate because we're at 88, if I move a dollar, we're going to about a 99 delta. That's how fast it moves. Uh, down here at 75, you've got 20. It takes me to 95 because we're running out of room. There's nothing left on the top side for, uh, for gamma and for delta any longer. And it is expiration date. Gilly said, and, and this uh, is good for pop 5K. Yes, absolutely, Gilly's. That moving average crossover is my intraday setup. I'm just sharing it on... SPY, but that's my intraday setup.
Uh, Michael said, Cohen, the chart goes to less than a quarter of the screen, and you're talking specifically to what it is on the chart. Not sure what you mean by Cohen, Mike. Sorry. Uh, I'm sure it was just a, a mistype. So, hey, Steele, how you doing? When did you start uh, streaming on YouTube? Um, so we've been doing it a couple of weeks now. We're trying to figure out how we stream without using, because we still use Zoom, without streaming through Zoom. There's some issues that I'm not a, a fan of, how they take branding over on there, uh, unless you buy 10 seats with them, which I have no reason to do. I already have four. I don't need 10. So we've got another software product, StreamYard. Hopefully next week we'll be able to run that and it'll allow us to transmit on multiple channels all at once without having to go through uh, Zoom to do it. But we should be on uh, every week um, into um, on YouTube. Okay, so there you go, Mike, good. So let me go back and find what the comment was. When the chart goes to less than a quarter of the screen and you are talking specifically on what it is on the chart, it's very unproductive. Yeah, you know, it's, don't know how else to do it, Mike. I mean, to say I use a four pack on my charts and to show that's what it is and not share it, it makes it hard. I get it on some mobile devices, it's probably really tough to see. Um, but I'll do the best I can to, to keep away from that for you. Uh, let's see. Most of the time we're talking a single chart. I brought it in to show what I'm looking for on one. Okay, so Jim said, um, can we take a look at the SPY daily chart and give my analysis of what you're seeing? I think we're going to be uh, going to possibly get a retest of the 21 and close lower. The other technicals look bearish as well. Okay, so let's see. Let's go here to Omega Charts. You guys, if you have not yet taken advantage of this, you need to. Uh, our special for our early bird is going away shortly. So you will not find, in my opinion, a better charting service than this. And I have had multiple individuals approach us of use our charts instead. We'll pay you all this money. And no, we're not doing it. All right? There's a reason that I use what I do here because this charting engine is outstanding. All right, um, let's see if I can do it this way. All right, okay, there we go. So are we gonna get a retest and fail? Right now, if I look at SPY, we're in a neutral, we're in a neutral bias, all right? Below the eight and 21, above the 55, we're in a neutral bias. Natural tendency would be to try to get back above the eight, because we are still in a, uh, when our three moving averages are aligned, they're aligned properly to bullish. So that would be the natural tendency. If we fail, 417.91 is our first support, and then 414 is a confluence of the 55 and the 118 fibbit. So if we break to the downside, 418 and 414 are the downside targets. If we move up, I need to close above that 422 and a half level before considering a bullish entry. Remember, we're near all-time highs right now. Yeah, Gillies, there's no, there's no instructions for the RR strategy inside of the Omega charts. It, it's a trade setup, not a particular strategy that I teach only inside of a platform. Um... All right, thank you there, Sean. Um, let's see. Mm. All right, so Jim, I hope that helped. All right, guys, drop in the candidate you want me to take a look at. I already see Nike has come across inside of our list. Remember, first come, first serve, folks. Don't get it in. I may not get to it. 
All right, so Nike was the very first one here. I like Nike, fairly consistent stock. It's got decent movement to it. All right. Earnings coming up. Of course, you want to confirm your earnings anytime you enter into a trade. All right. I would be day trading it only, and that would be down below that 129.65 level with 127.5 as my target on Nike. Caution with um, with the earnings coming out. That's my biggest thing right now is their earnings. Uh, all right. Will's asking for Janssen and Janssen, J and J. All right, earnings coming out in a couple of weeks. You see the E at the bottom right of the screen. I don't know if it's confirmed or not. You definitely want to go to an earnings whisper or your broker and confirm that. But very ugly pattern right now, right? Well, look at it. I mean, it's it's in this sideways yuck. You know, we're getting we added a little bit of a pop over here, and then we're back into this almost range bound uh, pattern. If we can get a break of these bottoms. We get a break of these bottoms right here, Will, uh, which is about 161.80. We're looking at about one. Come on. We're looking at about 156 and a half is our downside target. So you got a little bit of room to the downside for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's clear that out a little bit. NQ, Sarah's asking for, sure. Let's go over to... NQ. So on a five minute chart there, Sarah. Right, nowhere near all time highs right now, but definitely some nice movement in the last couple of weeks. Not what I want there. There you go. So we're bumping our head right now at these previous tops that we had in there, Sarah, that 14, one and a quarter, 14, 125 level seems to be a little bit of resistance. Overall, I like it, <coughs> it being the, the NQ, the NASDAQ, the Q, same thing. We're looking at roughly 14,200 as resistance. We break these tops in here, Sarah, we don't have a lot We'll slow down at the 173 level, and then we don't have a lot stopping us up to the 14.2 level. So I hope that helps. Uh, Trip, how you doing, sir? How are the puppies doing, Trip? So. Micron, uh, do we need a new fib? We do. If we close here now, we do. <coughs> wow. But we got to wait for the close. Earnings coming up. It looks like 74.33 is the downside target trip. Obviously, earnings are going to be the issue. <coughs> mm. Sorry about that. Are going to be the issue right now? Um, I'm going to look to redraw the fib in here, Trip. And we get close below that fibbit, which we haven't had yet. Today may be the day. So redraw the fib would be from this swing high, which looks like about April 12th, to the swing low about uh, May 12th. So one, one month exact in there, 12 to 12. QQQ. Anything for you, Brenda? Very nice. 
Very nice. Look at the eight moving average. Bring it in a little bit. Can we go to two? Maybe. Okay. Look at the eight moving average, the pink line. It's sitting right near that 342, 23 level. Today's bounce off there was a great catalyst as the potential move to the upside. It told you, screamed at you, take the flip and trade. Right? Uh, we're talking about 342, and now it's at 344. Nice little move there, two bucks with an 80 ish delta. That's a nice potential. When we look, Brenda, uh, let's do this. Forty two, fifty two. We need to split that and put a fibbit in there, Brenda. So we're going to add a negative one, three, six. So resistance becomes four, nine, uh, three, forty seven. And then 352 on uh no sorry yeah 347 352 on cues sylvie's asking for netflix all right on netflix had it down as a day trade we pushed up into our blue zone, which is a health zone. We failed off of there. We're under the moving averages. Now I like it a lot. Close down below the eight. Michael, you ready for this? And everybody else, eight period moving average. Netflix right now, close below the eight. Not a lot below, just below it. And I don't mean right up, but just give it some room. Visually, you could say without it closed below the line, the, the line right? Here's the eight, close below the eight retest and fail and there's your potential entry it's as hard complex complicated or simple as that that's what i'm looking for and will be for tomorrow and 479 is the first downside target so you got a little bit of room for this to move all right hope that helps sylvie uh, Daniel, how are you? XOM. All right, XOM, I'm still a fan of energy right now. I think it's undervalued still. It has been oil for a long time now. Uh, just made worse with what Biden came up with as a decision with the Canadian pipeline. Costs have gone through the roof ever since the decision to shut that down. We are definitely making the Middle East more uh, wealthy. So congrats to that. It's always good to you know help our other countries out become wealthy. Not us. We don't need the money. I mean, I've got an extra dollar and change a gallon, as I'm sure all of you do, to pay every single week and just give extra. I understand it's an environment and all that stuff. But I am sorry. You don't just say, this bottle of water that you buy in the store. We're no longer allowing you to buy this in the store, and there's no choice anymore for water. We're taking away all the water there is right unless you buy it from another country and we have it shipped in and we've got to raise the price come up with a solution before you take away what you call the problem so uh on xom it's got to get a close above the eight and i would look at the recent swing highs about 65 ish as our target robert's asking for face or booker huh <sighs> Overall bullish pattern, the entire run back from March, overall bullish pattern, got beat up a little bit through the trials. And where are we now? We're in summertime. Take the moving averages out of the picture there, Robert. And then what do you see? Actually, watch. Now, what do you see? What do you see? A channel. 328 to 337. Holy mackerel. It takes uh, two, three days to make that move in there. It went two days, three days, three days, two days, one day, two days. You get the picture? 
the opportunity is there over and over again on this position. I love the setup. Love the setup. All right, from YouTube, uh, Wall Street Bets is talking about MVIS. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So it's already made a tremendous move in here. Actually, it was on their initial run right here. And, the, and there was it all to give back. Holding the bottoms in here. So let's see, let's call it 12 and a half. All right, let's see if we can't get crazy on this one. MVIS. All right, only monthly positions, options available. I'm not very excited about that. Uh, but they're all ones that expire this Friday. So can I get down to the 12 and a half? Yeah, I can't get any premium for 12 and a half. So selling a naked put on it doesn't work for me. There's just nothing there for the for the next uh, five days. Uh, get back. If you're bullish on it, get back above the eight. Remember, this is a pure speculative play. It's short interest, and the shorts don't really seem to be fearing these increased prices. They're not getting out of the trades, right? They have higher lows and lower highs. So we've got a wedge formation happening in there. Where does it break? I don't know. If you're going to go long, I'd wait for the move above the eight moving average. So somewhere above 20 bucks before taking the entry. I hope that helps. Exactly. Well, mostly next. Sarah said, thanks. It's nice to get confirmation. And I'm looking at the chart correctly. You're welcome, Brenda. Yeah, so trips is rotten. I understand, Trip. <laughs> um, all right, Mike's asking for JP Morgan. Ho, ho, ho. Look at that move, baby. Crush, kill, destroy, right down to 236. For those of you that know, don't bother typing it in because it's just going to mess up my screen with what I'm able to see. But don't write it in. Don't write in, I know what I don't, nothing. Don't type it in. What is 236? What is it? I'm going to tell you. Hesitation. It's a hesitation point. We took that gap down Friday and we hit right at that 236. We move up and down a little bit. It doesn't mean it stops at exactly the line. Nothing in the world works like that in the market. But we hesitated around that level. We happen to take a little bit of a bounce today. We're in a bearish bias right now, not true bear. Moving averages are kind of convoluted. They're not in the right order. They're kind of mixed up a little, all right? But nothing about this right now says, ooh, take a trade. If I break below the current 236 line, which is 148.40, maybe I've got a potential at a bearish entry in there. I'm just going to flip that sideways a little bit more. I got a potential of a bearish entry in there. Uh, Sean, I didn't mess you up, did I, with this? All right. Uh, but I'm looking preferably a move back up to the 155 level and a fail. That would be a better entry on the short side because it's already gapped. So what happened on Friday? When we took that gap down at the end of the day, traders are sitting there going, oh my goodness, huh? Woo! man, I am spent. And now they're trying to figure out what's happening. If you try to jump in on this, you know, now you're late to the party. You're late to the party. You're probably hanging out with my wife if you're late to the party. She's always late to parties. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, Debbie, you got to set that alarm to get here on time. Absolutely. Um, doo -doo -doo. There are weekly, there's weeklies on MVIS. I'm not seeing them. At least trade stations not showing them. How about that? Let's try that again. Maybe I missed it. Ah, you know why I missed it? My bad. Okay. This is trade station 10. At home, I normally use 9.5. 
On 9.5, they separate weeklies and make them yellow on the option chain. Here they don't. Why? I have no friggin' clue. So I didn't realize I'm looking for yellow. I don't look for the word. I look for the color. It's easy to remember in my head. Good catch. Thank you very much for that. So weekly is available. What's available for next week on MVIS? I still can't get anything for next week's naked put. Five by 15, not for a 12 and a half. So, but Debbie, thank you. Deborah, thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Very cool. All right, other symbols, guys, type them in. Um, Robert, I think you had an Apple with Facebook. All right, we've got an NVIDIA came across, uh, looks like from one of the channels. So let's go take a look at NVIDIA. I am loving NVIDIA. It's purest of pure as far as bulls. That would be nice if I typed it in right. A bull setup. And we're, we're just, guys, Okay. For those out there that continue, continue to poo poo Fibonacci, continue to put it down and say it doesn't work. Here's my favorite if you draw enough lines on the screen, sooner or later you're going to hit one. Okay. And I guess you could be right if you knew what you were talking about. What does that mean? Look at Thursday on NVIDIA. Big candle for you to see. We had this nice breakout candle. There's the retest, folks. And there's the bounce. All right. We came down not quite to this fib line. But we closed almost perfectly at this one. The next day, Friday, we gap up, we run, and we fail and close just about that fib line. Today, and we're not done, day's not over yet, still another couple hours. Today, we gap down, we stretch, not quite all the way down. That fib line is at 709. We got down to about 713. Okay. So we've got a little bit of room in there from where we've gone to the potential of doing make it down even further than than uh we were earlier today. All of this to say Fibonacci work, folks. I you know, I don't know how else to line it up for you. You know, I don't have the sheet here. This is our tracking sheet from Power Option Plays. This week, we closed out with $6,630 open. In the last update we did, we do two updates a week. And it brought us to $527,436. And of course, we talk about uh, examples only in this. Uh, $527,436. I say that's probably pretty good. I could be wrong. Maybe you're doing a lot better than that. What if you only made $52,000? And only had 10% of what we've done. What if you only did $5,200 and you only had 1% of what we did? See, don't don't discount what the potential is in the market. And all of this, every bit of it is a rules-based system using, introducing Fibonacci. Every bit of it is using Fibs. Uh, Let's see. Da, 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 da. bunch of little comments in there uh, all right so then frank had asked on neo we got a few more minutes left we'll go through them oh let's get back over to moving averages all right frank i love how neo is sitting at a moving average right now gapped up Pull back to the eight would be my analysis on this. If I can get good cover call premium, I'd be all over this. Naked puts, I love it. Directional trade, it doesn't matter what your trade setup is. <clears throat> Neo's been known to give good covered call premium. We're looking at a resistance right above head at about mm, 48 and a quarter. So 
If we break that, 52 is the second target. On Neil. Deborah said, big airplane is moving today on news. Can we take a look at that? Absolutely. There is Boeing. Okay. Uh, Deborah, get me above. Get me above the 245. It should put the moving averages back in the right order. Here, let me zoom in. So you can see the eight is just slightly pink, just slightly below the green. Get the pink above the green. Get me above 245. And 254 is our next target. I like it. Not sure what the news is on it. Um, but I like it. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, where's my mouse? All right. Uh, another comment from Wall uh, from uh, YouTube Sage. Another one from Wall Street Bets. Whew. Holy mackerel! I don't know if, if if this one is something Wall Street Bets is promoting right now on Reddit something they had promoted but uh just started after the drop there but that i don't know i'd want to know what that massive drop was on this because right now here's what i do as soon as i see this my first instinct before i attach my mask and then put the mask on the kids is to draw the fibonacci that's first instinct right there Let's go back and look at this. I've got 840 as a fibbit, 53. I don't need a fibbit, a fibbit in there. So we don't, need, we don't need to split that level. So we're good. So it's hard for me to take a bullish trade here because we're in a bearish bias. I'd love to see you move back up to 60. I mean, uh, the upside trade there, I put a tight stop. But we get to 60, that eight moving average should get closer. We get a rollover. I'm looking at 54 as a downside target. So I like it. Gene said, I love fibs. What's cats doing? Uh, cat, not cats, cat. <laughs> Let's see. Pull it out. So they got a dividend coming up of a dollar eleven per share. What was their last div? Dollar three. Dollar three, so it looks like they increased dividend a little bit. So same scenario. Um, get me up to that two fifteen half level. The eight will be closer, not not there, but it'll be closer. So it gives it a B trade, not an A. Get it closer to that two fifteen half and roll over, and two oh eight and a half is our downside target. Really nice potential on cat bear wise. All right, so it's a bear cat. All right. Uh, so Trader Will have said on June 15, shares of Sage Therapeutics fell by as much as 20% in a single day at the company released phase three top line data for Zoranolaline. Damn, they'd probably do better if they just friggin' name it things that people could pronounce. An oral neuroactive steroid and GAB GABA receptor modular for the treatment of depression. Wow. Okay. So phase three, drug company. Be very careful then with Sage. Bad research report. Got it. So Debbie, Debbie said, and you put fibs on ExxonMobil. Um, Got to go back and look, Debbie. Sorry, I don't remember. All right. Nope, we don't have them on there. Whoa, what in the world did I do? Let's try that again. Lollipop, lollipop. All right. So, mm, 
1658, 960. All right, so we got to put fibbits in all of this, Debbie. We need a 118 and a 136. And I do the scrunch so you can see where all the lines are. Let's do it this way. Okay, there you go. All right, so I hope that helps, Debbie. All right, last one is CVX. Last one in our list, CVX. We need a bigger picture. Oh, wow, baby. All right, has been a nice channel. Okay. I guess we dropped our internet. We still good, Sean? All right, good. So, one hundred one up to one hundred seven is about where we're looking at. Oh, there we go. Just kicked in. Wow, it took a while. One hundred one to one hundred seven. Uh, we definitely could draw a fib off of this move back here. Get me above the 106, look for a move to 112 and a half. All right. Here. Guys, the charting program that we're using or have been using here is Omega Charts. Right? We rebranded it, added some new features to it, like this VWAP tool. Uh, the Pro Scanner is part of it. Guys, listen. This is an early bird special that we're doing on this. Right. This is the uh, probably the first time you see me talk about it as a standalone product now, standalone charting service. Uh, take advantage of it sooner rather than later because we go up, you know, shortly. We haven't picked an end date yet. We have a number in mind of where we think we'll cut it off. Uh, but we're working on it probably next Monday. We'll have a better idea of the when. So you got at least a week out there. But uh, unless we get the number we want this week, then we don't know. But by all means, guys, take advantage of the software. If you have questions, send an email to support at wealthbuildershq.com, and one of the support staff will be happy to answer those questions. If you need to get on and, and review the program a little bit, we can help you with that as well and, and kind of walk you through a little bit of, the, of how the software works and, and show you some things inside of there. So Amy just dropped a link inside of our chat box. Yes, Jim, there is a monthly data charge for the uh, for Omega Charts. First month is included free for the uh, delay data, which is usually what uh, I had for years. Um, and then from there, I don't remember what the price is, like 35, 40 bucks a month for the data. And then you, you pick what you want. Do you want real time? It's a few dollars more. Do you want e-minis? It's a few dollars more. Do you Now guys, if you're trading futures, you can connect this to your TradePro futures account and use their data and not have, have exchange fees that you're paying for through, uh, uh, Genesis, you're getting it directly from them uh, for free as as part of your your program. If you're if you're getting it already through TradePro, you'll get it on here as well. You can interlock the two programs together. So Frank said, purchase weeks ago, ordered a new Delta install. Can't wait. Absolutely, you're gonna love it, Frank. You're gonna love it. The best charting engine I have ever seen. Period. The end. Which is the reason I've used this now since 2000 exactly why I did it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave the room open for a couple of minutes. So you can grab those links. You have a great rest of your day. Stay focused on the quest to becoming a great trader. Keep crushing it. And remember, you're just one trade away. I will see all of you at our next update. Click on those links. Get yourself registered for Coach's Corner for Friday. And I will see you guys at our next one. Take care now.